Greetings and salutations, people of YouTube. It's your buddy Chopadong coming at you on a Friday afternoon with another episode of Chop Talk brought to you by DFSArmy.com, your one stop shop for everything fantasy sports related. All sports covered, coaches, tools, optimizers, projections, ownership, project, the whole bit is covered. So follow the link in the comment section down below, DFSArmy.com. Use code CHOP, C H O P, and I'm going to tell you once again. Prices are going up here in the next few days, and you need to jump now. A lot of you have done so, which is great. Kudos to you. Those of you that haven't, what are you waiting for? The price is going to go up. You're going to kick yourself if it jumps 10 bucks, 15 bucks a month or something like that. You're going to wish you were in because we always keep adding more, more staff, more minds, more brains, more coaches, more coaches, better projections, everything, and just the site just keeps growing. So what are you waiting for? Make yourself a better player today. We want to help you jump in here and get involved with us. Um, you can always find me on, on Twitter, at Chopadong, of course. Uh, give me a like, a follow, a whatever you want to call it out on Twitter. And what we're going to do today is we're going to jump in. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, too, by the way. What we're going to do is we're going to jump in to the research station today. We're going to bust up the, whatever it's called, the after hours slate, whatever. It's a four-game slate, 940, and then the 10 o'clock games. The main slate's been covered in chin music. Feel free to go look at that if you haven't already. You're going to already have a decent rundown of what the slate offers. But here's how it changes. When we wipe out all those other pitchers like DeGrom and Archer and, you know, Valis Velasquez, whatever, all of a sudden new chalk comes to the front. And that changes each individual slate. And if you want a way, tip number one, if you want a way to differentiate your lineups, differentiate your budget, force yourself onto different players because you're married to the same best plays on the main slate, play a smaller slate. It'll force a different construction on you most of the time. That's the whole idea. And then you get a little bit different mix and you may have more success on one slate than the other and offset a truly bad night. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to dive in like we always do and we're going to check the DFSA grade and see that Corbin and Verlander are ahead of Marco Gonzalez by a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll over to... Vegas lines info. We're going to see a 190, a 103, and a 160 favorite in Vegas, and a 174 down here by Brett Anderson, which is interesting. I don't know what we're going to do with that. But the 190, Corbin's going to be the chalk. He's got the highest K score on the slate, most likely. When we look, uh, what, 25 and 21 is a 460. No, he does not, because there's a 490 out of Verlander. Verlander's a 50 50 favorite. Nobody's going to want to take on the LA Dodgers. Corbin probably will wind up being the chalk at a slightly lower K score. If we look at Marco Gonzalez, we see. What, he's facing a team, 21%, he's a 20%, he's a contact type pitcher, a 422 K score, not good at all. Uh, doesn't mean he can't have the better night on the slate, just means that his strikeout upside isn't really there. And it looks like by his own K percentage, it's not there most of the time anyway. Brett Anderson was another big favorite, even worse, even more of a contact pitcher. That's a 340, 350 K score, that's pitiful. So we don't need these guys. We're going to be deciding between Corbin and Verlander. Corbin's your cash game pitcher. Verlander is your GPP pivot, your GPPPP pivot, if, if you're ballsy enough to pull off and go up against the LA Dodgers. Now you may look for BVP in the Dodger lineup and things like that and see if they, you know, Verlander typically owns the Dodgers, which... I don't know, being an interleague game, I doubt there's a lot of a sample there. But if he typically owns the Dodgers, then maybe you're on to something. But I would be a little bit cautious being how hot the Dodgers have been. Uh, so that's K score, that's uh, Vegas, and then price, of course, Verlander's going to be more expensive, which makes him even more of a GPP type of pivot. And then on a smaller slate like this, when they don't offer very big GPPs anyway, is it even worth the risk? If you're going to take the risk, that's tip number two. If you're going to take the risk, you've got to get paid. So you have to answer the question in your own head of is Corbin the safer play or is Verlander, you know, got enough upside tonight to really go crazy and pay it off? Or is my tournament going to pay me enough if Verlander does that, that it's even worth taking the chance? And, and my, my, my answer is no. I'm just going to probably run Corbin everywhere. Uh, I don't even know that I'd offset with Marco Gonzalez. Price difference isn't enough. Uh, for me to really want to take that chance either. Now, if he was down here at 6,700 or 7,000, I'd be all over it. What we're going to do now, we'll look at like we always do, because this is just a process, right? We can sort by ascending in this filter like we've been doing lately, or just look at the bottom four guys, being that they're pink and they are in the 40s and DFSA grade and under. Oakland, Detroit, Seattle, Arizona, those are our chalk offenses. Well, not our chalk offenses. People will be playing the Dodgers. People will be playing uh, Houston, whatever. This is my offense. These are the places I'm focused. Oakland, Detroit, Seattle, Arizona. 
So if I make sure that I've already got Arizona and I've got Seattle and I've got Oakland and I need who? Detroit? Uh, I don't think so. But those are the ones that I'm looking for on this slate. That's where I'm going to be spending most of my time and my focus. Uh, Detroit will probably be popular with the Verlander people because I'll need to save some money. Scroll over here, show you the double red. Let's look at, uh, sort this one out by descending order for the Woba against the pitchers. And we've got double red here in Brett Anderson and a little bit of double red in Chris Stratton. So we may also include, oh, there's Arizona. That's a big one. And then Detroit's really facing a good spot. Golly, really facing a good spot. So when I go into the trends tab, but I, I guarantee you they're just not scheduled to score a lot of runs tonight because it is Detroit. Let's take a peek. I've already sorted my Woba here. You know, I've gone greater than 350 like I usually do. And I see, well, they've got some bats. Okay. Martinez, Iglesias, Jones. Well, that's if these guys are getting at bats. If any of these guys pop up in the lineup, they may be worth a three stack. So, I don't know. Look for it. If you see them pop in the starting lineups, there you go. That's something that you could probably use. They are in a good spot. I would like to see them swinging a little better than 380 and 400, but, you know, who knows? And you might take Iglesias as a little punt, a little one-off. Well, look, the price difference, 2,800 and 4,000 is pretty, pretty substantial between FanDuel and I'm telling you Iglesias is in a good spot tonight. If I look at uh, Arizona, who would be next? They were in another great spot. I see Avila, if he gets the start. Uh, Peralta, Owings, John J. Martin, pretty much all of them except the big guns. You know, I don't see Pollock. I don't see Goldschmidt in here. It looks like their Wobas have dropped off below the 350 mark. Everybody else is way up there. Good. That keeps them super cheap. Not a bad GPP pivot. Run for Lander in Arizona. They're dirt cheap. So, Oakland. Davis, Kana, Chapman, Simeon, Lucroy, Fegley, and Barreto are not getting at bats. The rest of them are in these 460s and such. Great. Great numbers. I'll show you another little trick here. You can scroll over a little further on our research station and look at trending ISO the same way. Look at this 300 ISO out of Chris Davis lately. It's monster numbers. Not bad for only hitting the ball hard 17% of the time. Wow. I've never seen that before. Such a stark drop-off for a guy who's got just a mashing Woba and ISO. That's insane. I guess that means whatever he did hit, he hit it out of the park. Now you're looking for guys over 50% in this category a lot of the time. But that's what our VIPs uh, get to use, and most of you guys uh, pretty much have to just roll with what I show you. Now, when I look at Seattle... Cruz, Zanino, Heredia, Gamble, Spahn, and then a couple of guys getting no at-bats again. Gamble's not getting any at-bats either. But Cruz, Zanino, Spahn, especially if we're facing a lefty, which we are, and not a very good one at that in Barucki, um, Zanino mashes lefties. So as a typical, just what he does. Good splits hitter. Did I leave anybody out? I don't think I did. I hit all those four offenses. That's basically where I'm going to go. I'm going to try and put as many of those guys in my lineup as I possibly can tonight. Run a bunch of Corbin, run him around those four teams. You know, I'll have some, um, you know, some Arizona, Seattle, some Oakland, Arizona, some Detroit, Seattle, you know, maybe Arizona, Detroit, maybe some one-offs like Iglesias or something from somewhere. And that's just how I'm going to mix and match most of my lineups tonight. And that's what, by the numbers, should put us in a really, really good position. So the main thing to tell you today, the tip that I get to, tip number two, the end of the day type of tip so we can get out here in early fashion, um, kind of talking lately in our VIP channels about uh, player pools and do I want a tight player pool or do I want a spread out player pool? And would you run, say, a, uh, an Arizona stack in, say, five lineups tonight if you made five lineups? Uh, I might. They're in such a good spot tonight. I might, but that's a little bit boom or bust. And when you really tighten up your player pool like that, you're really, it's a good thing when you have a good night. It's not a good thing when you have a bad night. So it's just as volatile as playing, you know, some sort of GPP only type of strategy when you run multiple lineups and you've got such, you know, such a tight core that everything rides on those guys. When they hit, it's great because you just are relying on the secondary you know, pieces to that lineup. 
but when it doesn't hit, you have no chance at winning anything. However, a looser structure, something that's way more spread out, that has nobody in, say, more than 50% of your lineups, then that's almost starting to get too spread out to where, you know, you've got a little bit of everything, therefore you really kind of have nothing. Because something's going to do well, but a lot is going to do poorly because you've spread out too far. So it's basically there, there's, you know, you can under diversify your portfolio and you can over diversify it. If you are only invested in Amazon stock and Amazon goes bust tomorrow, you are screwed. Your retirement's gone. Ask the people that worked at Enron back in the, you know, whatever, early 2000s, 90s, whenever the hell that was. Ask those guys what happened to their retirement. Boom, see ya, bust. You've got to diversify a little bit, but you can't diversify so much. This is what when people in their in their retirement plans hold, you know, say dozens of mutual funds. Well, that's crazy because a mutual fund is already diversified. If you get diversification upon diversification upon diversification upon diversification, now you got a very, very flat, you know, instead of making a 10% return in a good market situation, you're maybe making 2% or 3%. You're barely keeping pace with inflation. There's two extremes to that, you know, boom or bust on the left and way too flat on the right. You have to find that happy medium and you have to do it with experimentation. But the main thing is you're going to have to be in the middle somewhere. You're going to have to have a fairly tight core that you um, that you that move, you know, that that has the potential to do well for your night, but you have to be spread out enough that you've insulated yourself a little bit too. Then you can steadily grow and steadily grind up a bankroll. You know, you're not so up and down and up and down and up and down. And you're not going to win every night. That's not possible. And you're going to be uncomfortable. That's just the way it goes. You're going to have to put yourself into an uncomfortable. I think people are looking for just a click button. Um, I can click it and forget it and don't have to worry about it. Uh, a type of system that wins money night after night after night. That does not exist in daily fantasy sports. It just It doesn't. We're talking about human beings and they have random performances. And they have outlier performances. And it's just it's the way it is. You've got it. There's going to be good runs. There's going to be bad runs, and hopefully, at the end of the day, you're up more than you look than you than you wagered, and that's all DFS is. But you have to come to grips with that. You have to draw those lines in the sand somewhere, so that you actually have a chance at winning something. You know, it's like I'll leave you with this. It's like uh, Mr. Miyagi said in the Karate Kid, if you remember that movie. He had a big talk with Daniel's son when he was. Uh, or you know, painting the fence, or you know, whatever, waxing the cars. And he said, Danielson, Danielson. He said, walk right side of the road, safe. Walk left side of the road, safe. Walk middle road, sooner or later, just like grape. And that should instantly dawn on you. That is a metaphor for life. You have to make decisions. You, you know, every time we saw a dead squirrel on the road, my grandfather and I were driving around the neighborhood, my grandfather would always point it out and go, ha, huh, indecisive squirrel. And it absolutely cracked me up because those are the ones that get hit, the squirrels that are in the middle of the road playing with you when you're driving down the road and they can't make up their mind. Do I want to go this way or that way? They're bam, gone. Usually the squirrels are steadfast in their decision and zoop, right across the road, they usually get home free. You've got to be the same way when it comes to DFS. You have to make decisions, smart decisions, safe decisions, but you have to make decisions. If you sit there and you waffle, am I a cash guy or a GPP guy? Do I need three of these guys in five lineups or do I need, you know, two or do I need four lineups or 10 lineups tonight? Or I need, you know, man, indecision kills, just like squirrels, indecision kills. You have to be comfortable being uncomfortable to be successful in DFS. You just do. All right, guys, that'll wrap it for the weekend. Hopefully you guys have a good one. Play some MMA. Play some, you know, some what we've got. Uh, I, do we have football? Maybe that's next week. But I, you know what? Play some baseball with me. We'll come back on Monday. We'll wrap it up. We'll do it again. Don't forget, like and subscribe to this channel. Become a VIP. Jump in. Get, our, get access to all of our tools. Optimizer, everything that we have to offer. And do it for one low monthly price that is maybe a third of what other people charge out in the industry that don't even offer what we offer. So peace out, guys. Take care. I will see you when I see you.